Very good evening. Glad you could join us as ever for an hour of sporting chat here on Sheffield Live TV. Now, they do say that you can't please all of the people all of the time, and nobody knows that better than I do and most, uh, most journalists. However, I think tonight we come pretty close, at least to pleasing maybe most of the people most of the time. My guests need no introduction, so I'm not going to bother. I'm going to say a warm welcome to Lee Bullen and Tony Curry, who I think had never met before this. H had you? Had you met? Well, I, I, I saw him at a charity, in a charity game a few weeks ago uh, up at Alam FC. Um, yeah, he got man in a match, I think. He's, uh... You mean you, you weren't playing then? Oh, no, no, I haven't played for a while. Yeah, Alan. Maybe, maybe, maybe you should have done if he got man of the match. Eh? What do you <laughs> reckon? <laughs> yeah. I, I presented the trophy at the end. That was about all I could do. Good to see you both. Uh, and, and great that you've repeated your earlier visits to the studio here, despite the three flights of stairs, Tony, which is an increasing challenge for you. It warmed me up uh, after being out in the freezing cold and not being able to get in. I'm glad to be of service. I'm <laughs> glad to be of service. The assistant coach of Sheffield Wednesday is uh, Lee Bullen. We'll talk about his team uh, uh, and everything else uh, that comes to mind in football. Tony Curry is probably only the greatest player uh, that's ever played for Sheffield United. Uh, that's on my script. It's, is that acceptable to you, Mr. Mr. Curry? I've got the trophy at home. You have so, to prove uh, it. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll take that. So, as we look ahead to this sporting weekend, we know where Lee's going to be. He's going to be at, well, I'm hoping you're going to be at Fulham. Yeah? I'll be there. I'll You'll be there. Looking forward to it. You're going to be at Bramall Lane. I'll be at Bramall Lane, yes. Sheffield uh, United v Shrewsbury. Yeah, I've got, uh, uh, I, I entertain, well, I don't sing and dance, but um, I, they, they've named a room after me, which is called TC10 Restaurant. Um, and uh, I have an ex-player to, uh, to look after every match. So I've got Roy Ridge. This Roy weekend yeah. goes back to Len Badger's days. Um, uh, full back, um, didn't play that many games, but he was there a long time. Before my time, for sure, because I'm, I'm struggling to remember that name. Well, you're only a boy. I am only a boy. I'm glad you. I'm glad somebody's realised that at long last. Lee, unfortunately, you're too young to have seen this guy play. Very unfortunately, yeah. But you've informed me I can quite easily pick up black and white pictures on YouTube alongside. So. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed we can. Indeed we can. But we can also see YouTube pictures of, of that guy in action. You, you want to look up Lee's uh, most famous goals, notably in Scotland. By the way, I do apologise for the lack of subtitles. The Cockney uh, and the Scot, at least maybe you, you might understand me, <laughs> me here tonight. Cockney, what are you on about? I'm an I'm a adopted Yorkshireman now, surely. 41 years in Yorkshire. Yeah, it's long. I'm trying to put, take, get the accent off tonight. The, uh, not get the Yorkshire accent off, but trying to calm down the uh, Cockney accent a bit. Don't bother. Don't right, bother. Okay. We, love, we love you as you are. Chris Wilder, first of all, and the turnaround at Sheffield United. It's, well, it's not before time, uh, but how impressed have you been with what you've seen this season? I presume you have been impressed. Yeah, well, not at the start. It's, it was a bad start, wasn't it? One point from the first four games, bottom of the league, and uh, uh, we, th we thought we'd give... Uh, I think Chris thought we'd give the rest of the team, the uh, rest of the league, a bit of a start. Yeah. You know, seeing as we started out as favourites again. But um, now he's got them, they're very solid. They, they fight for every ball. They win probably 90% of the balls, um, which is a good, great start for, uh, for a start. And um, they're, they're, they're all sort of pulling for each other, wanting the ball, which is my biggest thing. You know, the man on the ball's got so many more options now to what to what they've had over the last number of years. Yeah. And that's that's the that's the biggest thing for me. People are wanting it, there's a confidence in the team. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and and you say that that pressing game when the opposition's got it, he's right on the back on their back players, isn't he, to try and get it back straight away. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, you, you know, every every little loose ball, anything, whether it's in the air, on the deck. They're, they're, they're really pulling for each other, which is, which is what you want, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday observations on Sheffield United, but we will talk about the Owls in a minute. Um, I think Sheffield is a city, it's a working class city. So yeah. the, the, the most important thing any supporter wants when they go to watch the football team, whether it's red and white or blue and white, 
as a team rolling their sleeves up and, for, and working for each other. And as Tony says, um, it sounds as if I've not seen much of United. I've got a few friends that are Blades fans. And, and the biggest positive they're saying is that there's a heck of a team spirit amongst the boys at the moment. They're fighting for each other. Um, they're playing at high tempo. They're covering for each other's mistakes when they come along. Uh, and they're playing with a heck of a lot of confidence. So mm. that helps. Yeah, it got off to a sticky start, but it's a hard thing to stop when you've got some momentum. Yeah, as Sheffield Wednesday discovered with Absolutely. what happened last season. Absolutely. And Sheffield United have got that now. And people talk about the difference between, say, a traditional English coach, which certainly Chris Wilder is. You know, his methods are, are very English, doesn't go in for squad rotation, etc., which you and Carlos will do, but the, the, the hard work ethic is, is similar there. Oh, it's totally both. I mean, Carlos certainly pushes that. I mean, he's, he's, he's not hidden his thoughts on the fact that he wants to buy into the culture of the city. And yeah. as I say, talking about it, that working class mentality, that, that grit the teeth, dig in and fight when your chips are down and back each other up type of thing. But early on in the season, I mean, you're talking about British mentality of coaches. I mean, Chris didn't hold back in his comments sometimes after some of the disappointing results. And I think no. it was right. I mean, he's not going to... He's not going to shirk that responsibility and I think a few home truths were told and the players have bought into that and they're certainly getting the results and reaping the benefits of that now. Mm. Home truths can be told by your gaffer as well. Uh, he's, he's perhaps uh, a little bit more forthright than his uh, persona would suggest sometimes. He's a tough cookie. He's a tough cookie. And um, yeah, I mean, we've had some fantastic performances this season. We've had a couple of disappointing performances and obviously the Ipswich one was a sore one where we just didn't really get going in the way we've uh, we have done in the past and um, we shall we say we've had a chat about it uh, yeah and and the players were left in no uncertain terms that it, I, listen I, sometimes the manager has to say it, but sometimes the players don't need to be told they know mm. as soon as they come off that pitch but if we put on a performance in the same mentality as the players have trained this week we're going to get a good result on Saturday. Yeah. When you say you've had a chat, that's a, a euphemism <coughs> for yes. something else. But it perhaps reminds me and takes me back to early last season when you lost at home to Middlesbrough and that performance too was regarded as unacceptable. And yeah. I think Carlos, certainly when he kicked a few water bottles around, I happen to know from him uh, on that occasion. I don't know if he did do this time, but sometimes it's refreshing to know that the people inside the club have seen the same game mm -hmm. as the supporters and, and the journalists who watched it. Absolutely. And, but the thing is, we can't get too low about it. I mean, we're on the exact same points this stage of the season uh, under the same amount of games as we were last season. Yeah. Um, so, and we're only two points off the playoffs. But the modern game is it's here, it's now, it's decisions, it's uh, opinions straight away after a game. Um, until you get to digest it and really sit back and, and focus on where we are. Yes, it was a disappointing result against Ipswich. But we have the same points uh, tally as we did this time last year. Uh, and we're right on the coattails of that top six again. So mm. let's not get too downhearted about it. Yeah, sense of perspective about that. Just as I wouldn't imagine under this manager that Sheffield United will get carried away in any way with even 12, 12 matches unbeaten. No, no. It, it, it's great to, to have that, um, that unbeaten run, obviously. We haven't had that for a long time. Um, and it can only be be good being being near the top of the league gives you confidence being unbeaten gives you confidence and um you know they're just they're just doing so well at the moment um and and, and I, I can't see i can't see us having too much trouble really but uh, the top two well i hope so it's, it's about yeah. time we got out of this league isn't it Six you're not going to do it in the playoffs that's for sure. <laughs> well we'll see but uh no, we, we all want uh, automatic this year. But, uh. For all the hard work ethic that, that you've praised, I imagine that somebody who played in your style the way you did probably admires one or two players who are making that tick over in the middle of the park, not least Paul Coots, who appear to have no future whatsoever at the club, and now he's just pulling the strings there. For yeah, the it's, it's, been, it's been a right turnaround for him, um, or for, for, yeah, for, the, for the team. Um, Different managers have different ways of playing, and he, he's not shown really what he can, in and out here and there, but he's not shown consistently what he can do. And this year, this year he has, mm. and um, he looks strong, fit, fast, and he can do a bit with a ball. He's yeah. you know 
quite a bit with a ball. And, and John Fleck, who's, who's come in, and it seems to me those two are really making him play at the minute. Yeah, well, I, I think he's got a lot more to come. Like he's, um, you, you can tell what he can do, what he can do. Mm. And I think, and, and it's the same with, with uh, Duffy as well. I, I like Duffy, he's destroyed us in playing for two different teams at the lane. Mm. Against us, and I thought well, Scun I want Scunthorpe was one. Wasn't yeah, it? exactly. Yeah. I, I thought I want yeah. him to be here because he, you know, he he makes things tick. He, he's got good yeah. vision, great vision, yeah, passing ability. He likes to get it back, one twos, three fours, and um, you know, he's he's. I, I I I'd like to see him in in the middle of the park, being able to go wherever the ball is. I mean, that's what I like to yeah. do because I, I know I could, I was confident I Rather could do than something with it. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's playing, he's playing a bit wide, you know, white, right, mm. right or left, but... Um, I've seen him in you know, that role. I'm, I'm not going to, you know, the manager knows what he's doing and uh, that, that, that's fine. And I, I think everybody's got great confidence in Mr Wilder, the boss. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as I think they still have in Carlos Cavallo, really, because there is a, a tendency to overreact in football. And you've had this fortnight's break, and, and, and sometimes it comes at a wrong time for a team. Is there such a thing sometimes as a right time? Has that, has that fortnight been constructive after what you admit was a very substandard performance against Ipswich? <sighs> I would much rather go on the international break on the back of three points. Yeah. Um, but it the last one we lost against Brighton just before the break. This one yeah. we lost against Ipswich. But when we came back, we reacted properly and we got, had a decent run of, run of yeah. results. And uh, hopefully that's what happens. As I say, the, the work the players have been putting in and the tempo they've been training at certainly points to it being very, very positive in the next uh, two or three games. But it's a tough, tough league. We're going to, to London against Fulham, who are on a great run of form themselves at the moment. To, win 5-0 and 2-0 in the last two games and beat Huddersfield, who are a very strong side this year, 5-0. It's yeah. up against the next manager of ours as well, who's yeah. sitting on the bench there. It's, it's, nah, Fulham's a brilliant place to go and play football or be involved in a football match. The fans love travelling yeah. down there. and As I say, I think everybody's looking forward to it. Sometimes that international break and just feels, that two weeks feels like an age. Yeah. You just want to get back on track and get going again. Yeah, it can also give time to take stock and to reflect and uh, I don't know to what degree that, that's happened. I mean, for whatever reason, with a lot of players of great ability and flair, you've obviously not scored as many goals as, as you and Carlos would have hoped or expected to do mm -hmm. this season. Have you come to any conclusions as to maybe why that is or what, no. what can be done to no. improve I that? I mean, it becomes a bigger problem if you're not creating the chances because eventually these yeah. chances are going to go in because... There's the old saying, form is temporary, class is permanent. And these boys are, are strong players that know this league. Forestieri, Fletcher, Hooper, Lukashval, Bigatti. That'll turn. But if you're not creating the chances, because every, every game, majority of games, we're you creating to. 10 to 15 but good you opportunities. you didn't against Ipswich. We so didn't against what? Ipswich. No. And that, I think that was the biggest frustration, yeah. yeah. But Mick McCarthy's a wily old <laughs> championship manager. He knows how to play the game and he, he came with a plan and don't get me wrong, I think he was delighted to get the draw. He got the ace up his sleeve with it with a late goal and we're headed back down the road with the three points but um, I think he would have been happy with the draw, never mind the three points and, but we were so disappointed uh, as I've touched on earlier. You mentioned Lucas Yao, I believe at the uh, media conference today Carlos was talking about him being involved yep. at the weekend and He's certainly somebody that you can provide something different Absolutely. to. Yeah, I mean, he's a young lad with a lot of energy. He'll stretch the game. Um, we are the young lad, uh, Lavery, that's just signed for Sheffield United that plays on the shoulders of defenders and yes. likes to stretch the game that way. Yeah. Nowadays, in the modern game, a lot of strikers like to come to the ball, be that link man, drop into a number 10 position. Whereas sometimes defenders hate that one that just mm. chases things down in the corner, make bad balls, good balls type of thing. Yeah. Um, and Lucas will do that for us. One of our best performances this season was away at Brentford, and Lucas played that game up front with Fletcher. Fernando played off the left-hand side. We created chance after chance. We should have been seven up at half-time, but yeah. our Achilles heel this season is we never took our chances, and we ended up hanging on for a draw. Um, but as you say, Lucas gives us a different option up there if, uh, if we need to change things, we need to mm. mix things up or give uh, Fulham something else to think about. Yeah, he's certainly got the pace and trickery. Certainly has. Certainly has. Uh, has he toughened up in, in, in terms of the physical side I think he's of the getting English used game. to it. He's had that, uh, that period under his belt already. I think Ati Nui took a little bit 
given his bulk and his size, you would have thought he'd adapted to the English game quickly, but it's a whole different ball game this championship in yeah. League One uh, and the physical side of the game in England. But Lucas is slowly but surely, yeah, right. grabbing onto what's required and um, he's trained great as well. So it's great having those options. Okay. Makes it a difficult choice picking the team, well, picking the subs, never mind the team. Well, just as well you don't do it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you can sleep better at night. Uh, one for Carlos. We'll talk more about um, Stuart Gray uh, and, and other matters. Uh, after the break, second part of the show, Fernando Forestieri as well, and the, the way that he's trained. Uh, Carlos saying that he's, he's sensing that he's, he's got the bit between his teeth there. Sheffield United and goals, not in short supply at the moment. No. Billy Sharp with a 11 there, <coughs> Matt Doan's got one or two, but it's more the depth of competition coming through now with Leon Clark, is fit, Keelan Lavery, as, as Lee mentioned there. I mean, that's pretty healthy, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, it certainly is when you've got a couple that, that are just coming back in. Yeah. Leon looked good um, when he came on. In fact, he was good uh, against Chesterfield on Sunday. Um, and, uh, you know, as you say, Billy Billy's can't do anything wrong at the moment in front of the goal. How many has he got? 12? He's got 11. 12, 11 12. Um, he's got six since he was here, in here about three weeks ago. Three or four weeks ago. He hasn't stopped scoring no, since no. he sat there. <laughs> no. So well, I'm just waiting for a bit of a... Yeah, well, we're making chances. I mean, I, th I think we, we always have done, really. The, the ball's been flashing across the box left, left and right, and uh, we've just not got on the end of him. Had a bit of bad luck here and there, but, um, you know, and, uh, Matty Doan... He gets in positions. He he he, he, he runs all. Out. He never stops. Um, and 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 I suppose Billy doesn't really either. But uh, Matt is a bit more luck. Matt, he could have got five yeah. or six more. Really, he you could need... he, he could have got a couple on on Sunday. But uh, he missed kick one. I think uh, into the ground before it went to the keeper. So. You need a bit of rugged defending as well, and that's certainly been put in place, not least by Ethan Ebanks Landell, who's become a real cult figure. I'm going to put that question to you, Lee, because you and your style came to mind when I was thinking of uh, Ebanks Landell. He's rough and ready, he wins it in the air, does the simple things. An agricultural centre back, is that what you're trying to say? Ah, well, you used to be a striker at one time. Well, I was back in the day, yeah, yeah. absolutely, when I played with your nephew. He was a winger, I was a striker. Yeah. But no, we know Big Ethan from his Wolves days. We've come across him a few times, and as you say, he's certainly uncompromising, shall we say. Mm. He reminds me of uh, Big Rita Johnson that we had. Yes. I mean, he's probably um, that type of character where if anything goes in his vicinity, yeah. he's taking man and ball, no matter what. And yeah. sometimes you just need that. That's the type of thing that kicks a crowd off as well. If, if the game's gone into a lull, the ball's hung up, or a tackle's there to be won, just that type of thing, it gets the crowd up and up and at him type of thing. And um, I've read, uh, uh, are they keeping him from January onwards? I think there was a debate, Tried. would Wolves want him back? And I, they're still talking. I've heard, I've covered, Lambert Wolves, comes in. I've covered Wolves recently at Blackburn, and inquiries behind the scenes, I didn't have such a great appetite for them to have him back. Right. Okay. So that opens the window for Sheffield United, and everybody's going shh about how good he's, he's been for them. So it, it could happen. You talk about that uh, ability to get the crowd going with a challenge. I mean, you've got a player just like that in Sam Hutchinson, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he can be rash at times himself as well. Yeah. But he's been he's been absolutely outstanding going back to centre back and that type of thing. He made two or three fantastic challenges, as you say. It just gets the crowd up, uh, brings back that British feel to the football side of things yeah. when you put those crunching tackles. And because more often than not, the referee blows his whistle for a for a foul nowadays. They would never have. No. It'd have to be head height in your days, wouldn't it, before oh, they'd yeah. blow up with yeah. someone? Oh, blimey, yeah. <laughs> no fouls in them days. The thing is, far less of it, far less of it since he's been playing centre-back. Yeah, you can see the player. A little bit more control there. Yeah. Is that yeah. your best position? Eh, possibly. I don't, I don't know if, if you ask Sam that, maybe right-back centre-back. I think he's yeah. the type of lad that could play three or four positions and always do a fantastic job for you. Right. That's what we've got, I think. We've got quite a few players that can play in different positions as well, which is only, yeah. which is only good. Absolutely. Excellent. That's the warm-up completed. We'll be back in five minutes' time. A little bit of subliminal advertising here for Mr Bullen's benefit and my benefit. It's Christmas coming up. Always an optimist. Uh, the rumour is not everybody, every Wednesday fan's got one of these yet. Christmas, by the way. Hey, and he's writing a book as well. Find out about that in five minutes. See you in a bit.
Very good evening. Glad you could join us as ever for an hour of sporting chat here on Sheffield Live TV. Now, they do say that you can't please all of the people all of the time, and nobody knows that better than I do and most, uh, most journalists. However, I think tonight we come pretty close, at least to pleasing maybe most of the people most of the time. My guests need no introduction, so I'm not going to bother. I'm going to say a warm welcome to Lee Bullen and Tony Curry, who I think had never met before this. H had you? Had you met? Well, I, I, I saw him at a charity, in a charity game a few weeks ago uh, up at Alam FC. Um, yeah, he got man in a match, I think. he's. Uh... You mean you, you weren't playing then? Oh, no, no, I haven't played for a while. Yeah, Alan. Maybe, maybe, maybe you should have done if he got man of the match. Eh? What do you oh, reckon? Yeah. <laughs> I, I presented the trophy at the end. That was about all those four games, bottom of the league. And uh, uh, we, we thought we'd give... Uh, I think Chris thought we'd give the rest of the team, the uh, rest of the league, a bit of a start. Yeah. You know, seeing as we started out as favourites again. But um, now he's got them, they're very solid. They, they fight for every ball. They win probably 90% of the balls, um, which is a good, great start for, uh, for a start. And um, they're, they're, they're all sort of pulling for each other, wanting the ball, which is my biggest thing. You know, the man on the ball's got so many more options now to what to what they've had over the last number of years. Yeah. And that's that's the that's the biggest thing for me. People are wanting it, there's a confidence in the team. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and and you say that that pressing game when the opposition's got it, he's right on the back on their back players, isn't he, to try and get it back straight away. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, you, you know, every every little loose ball, anything, whether it's in the air, on the deck. They're, they're, they're really pulling for each other, which is, which is what you want, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday observations on Sheffield United, but we will talk about the Owls in a minute. Uh, Days, um, uh, full-back, um, didn't play that many games, but he was there a long time. Before my time, for sure, because I'm, I'm struggling to remember that name. Well, you're only a boy. I am only a boy. I'm glad, you, I'm glad somebody's realised that at long last. Lee, unfortunately, you're too young to have seen this guy play. Very unfortunately, yeah. But you've informed me I can quite easily pick up black and white pictures on YouTube alongside. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed we can. Indeed we can. But we can also see YouTube pictures of, of that guy in action. You, you want to look up Lee's uh, most famous goals, notably in Scotland. By the way, I do apologise for the lack of subtitles. The Cockney uh, and the Scot, at least maybe you, you might understand me, <laughs> me here tonight. Cockney, what are you on about? I'm an I'm a adopted Yorkshireman now, surely. 41 years in Yorkshire. Yeah, it's long. I'm trying to put, take, get the accent off tonight. The, uh, not get the Yorkshire accent off, but trying to calm down the uh, Cockney accent a bit. Don't bother. Don't right, bother. Okay. We, love, we love you as you are. Chris Wilder, first of all, and the turnaround at Sheffield United. It's, well, it's not before time, uh, but how impressed have you been with what you've seen this season? I presume you have been impressed. Yeah, well, not at the start. It's, it was a bad start, wasn't it, one point from the first? Um, I think Sheffield is a city. It's a working-class city. So yeah. the, the, the most important thing any supporter wants when they go and watch the football team, whether it's red and white or blue and white, is a team rolling their sleeves up and, for, and working for each other. And as Tony says, um, it sounds as if I've not seen much of United. I've got a few friends that are Blades fans. And, and the biggest positive they're saying is that there's a heck of a team spirit amongst the boys at the moment. They're fighting for each other. Um, they're playing at high tempo. They're covering for each other's mistakes when they come along. Uh, and they're playing with a heck of a lot of confidence. So mm. that helps. Yeah, it got off to a sticky start, but it's a hard thing to stop when you've got some momentum. Yeah, as Sheffield Wednesday discovered with Absolutely. what happened last season. Absolutely. And Sheffield United have got that now. And people talk about the difference between, say, a traditional English coach, which certainly Chris Wilder is. You know, his methods are, are very English, doesn't go in for squad rotation, etc., which you and Carlos will do, but the, the, the hard work ethic is, is similar there. Oh, it's totally both. I mean, Carlos certainly pushes that. I mean, he's, he's, he's not hidden his thoughts on the fact that he wants to buy into the culture of the city. And yeah. as I say, you're talking about it, that working class mentality, that, that grit the teeth, dig in and fight when your chips are down and back each other up type of thing. But early on in the season, I mean, you're talking about British men could do. Good to see you both. Uh, and, and great that you've repeated your 
earlier visits to the studio here, despite the three flights of stairs, Tony, which is an increasing challenge for you. It warmed me up uh, after being out in the freezing cold and not being able to get in. I'm glad to be of service. <laughs> I'm glad to be of service. The assistant coach of Sheffield Wednesday is uh, Lee Bullen. We'll talk about his team uh, uh, and everything else. Uh, it, it comes to mind in football. Tony Curry is probably only the greatest player uh, that's ever played for Sheffield United. Uh, that's on my script. It's is that acceptable to you, Mr. Mr. I've got the trophy at home. Yeah, so, to prove uh, it. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll take that. So, as we look ahead to this sporting weekend, we know where Lee's going to be. He's going to be at, well, I'm hoping you're going to be at Fulham. Yeah? I'll be there. I'll You'll be there. Looking forward to it. You're going to be at Bramall Lane. I'll be at Bramall Lane, yes. Sheffield uh, United v Shrewsbury. Yeah, I've got. Uh, I, I entertain. Well, I don't sing and dance, but um, I, they, they've named a room after me, which is called TC10 Restaurant. Um, and uh, I have an ex-player to uh, to look after every match. So I've got Roy Ridge this Roy weekend. Ridge. Yeah. Goes back to Len Badger's 